previously on Super Idols RPG. And standing in the doorframe are three exasperated figures. I transferred today, actually. Jaden's definitely irradiating like the. Even though he's just met you, he's already a huge fan. Nah, this is. This is kind of my always, so no light show for me. And that's definitely all there is to Queen B. Again, why do you keep asking if there's more? Oh, you've got an agent. How do you get an agent? Oh, uh, Valerie, like, breaks eye contact. And she lied about being the president at first. Oh no, she has a clipboard that she thinks that's the same thing. It's a nice clipboard, okay? And you see a very, like, excited looking Ms. Doyle in the doorframe. And she's smiling brightly at everybody. And she announces, Guess what, everybody? You have a gig! Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to Super Idols RPG! As always, I am your GM, Aaron Cerise, and with me today are Dana. Hello. T. Hello. Drac. Hey. Maria. How you doing? And Luca. Hello. <laughs> Hello, one and all. Uh, we left you off on a very exciting point last episode, so I suppose we probably shouldn't uh, dally around too long and just um, get on with it and not drag things out and drag out the suspense and oh what's gonna happen oh no <laughs> no um we, we're coming back directly into where we left off last time uh ms doyle has just burst into the room uh and she's panting looking very excited like she just ran over here uh and has said guess what everyone you have a gig what do you do angie drops her note or her clipboard on the ground and says, shut up. I am not kidding. Do you know who I was just on the phone with? Who? <laughs> I was just on the phone with a very popular music venue downtown. You may know them. They are... Actually, I'm going to break in here. This music venue, I have not actually named it yet, and I kind of want to have this be a collaborative thing. I would like you all to come up with a name for this popular music venue. Oh, awesome. That's downtown. Oh, boy. Oh, okay. Is it going to be like, I guess, an all-ages one, like the bronze? Uh, sort of. Like, it has a nightclub <laughs> aspect, but it will allow, like, under 18 in, like, the early evening and daytime. Okay. Oh. So they're a, they're a very hot ticket place. Their spots are usually booked up all the time. They're very welcoming as super idols. Oh, uh, you have a suggestion, but I'm okay with anyone else going first, if they have ideas also. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I, have, yeah. I don't have an idea right now. Well, it's called, like, the Stormlight something, because it's called the Stormlight since everyone nearby says it sounds like thunder whenever it's, like, getting going. Oh, goodness. Ooh. That's yeah. I like good. it. I like that. I like it. it yeah. It's kind of taking an inspiration that, like, the similar All Ages Club growing up for me was called Storm, so that just, when you said that, it just came to my mind. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Yeah. This also makes sense for me, because I feel like this is a place where, like, people of the caliber of, like, Starry Night Sky would go, and put on their big light shows yeah yeah <laughs> all right let's go with this let's go with the stormlight then uh do we want that to be all one word or two words one word all one right word, yeah yeah cool all right <laughs> so let's unfreeze time and ms doyle continues uh you may have heard of it it's called the stormlight and even like an old like fuddy duddy like Ms. Doyle knows the Stormlight. This is a very very popular music venue. <laughs> this is properly jaw dropping. The Stormlight? No way. I was not expecting anything like this, especially since you literally just started a few days ago. Um, but apparently, someone put in a good word for the Fort McNally Idol Club after one of the slots for their weekend amateur hour dropped out, and those slots are usually booked up like. Months in advance. I I think the the person who who gave the tip was someone from from Rain Shadow Records. Even no way. Oh um, yeah. That I I guess that makes sense. There um the Rain Shadow is the company that um represents me. So that's 
obviously they are uh, helping out the club and myself. That's uh, awesome. That would make sense, uh, given what they said was the condition for the gig, which did make me a little bit hesitant. Um, it's still an exciting opportunity for you all, uh, but I did want to give you all an opportunity to talk about it first, because there is a condition on the slot. And that is, uh, apparently, they want Violence Violet, I, I take it that's, that's you, Valerie, uh, they want Violence Violet to be the headliner for this gig. Oh, well, that, that makes perfect sense, of course. So wait, we don't we don't get a group name. We're just support for Vivi. That I believe so. They haven't. They they've booked you as the Fort McNally Idol Club, but they want it to be something along the lines of Violence Violet featuring the Fort McNally Idol Club or whatever name that you end up deciding upon. Oh, Ah, uh, looks at the whole group. But uh, are we even ready for something like that? Hell yeah, we are. That was the other reason I was a little bit hesitant, uh, because it is relatively soon. It's in about two weeks. Today is, uh, just as out of character, uh, the in-game current day is Friday, September 4th. And she says, uh, the, the slot is on Saturday, September 19th at 6 o'clock p.m. Do you think oh. that is too soon for you to be ready? Two weeks? No problem. No, this That's is fine. Easy. I mean... I think we can do it. This is perfect. And we, for now, we can focus on, you know, one main part of the act. And I'm I'm sure that will help. We don't have to worry too much about, you know, finding a sound for everyone. And then uh, once, once we've, we've figured out how well we can work on this gig, then we can try to see if we want to expand our act beyond that. Like, yeah, this is going to be a one-off thing. Sure, sure. And Ms. Doyle clasped her hands together. Lovely. Uh, I, in that case, I will call the I will call the booker back and, and let them know that it's yes for you. I'm very excited for you all. Oh, this is going to be such a great opportunity. Um, and especially if you end up participating in the SingStar tournament in a few months, uh, this will be a great leg up for you in that. I can't wait. Violence, Violet, and the rest. Have a nice ring to it. Uh, that's that's a work in progress. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm I'm sure we'll be able to come up with a better subtitle. Just point me where to make noise, and I'm grand. <laughs> okay, well, we have a lot of planning, so I just kind of look at Mrs. Doyle to be like, "You can go away now." <laughs> yes, <laughs> without saying it. <laughs> yeah, no. And Miss Doyle gives gives you all a wink, like, "Oh, you guys are gonna rock it!" Literally. All right, here I here I go. Boring teacher, gone now. You're not boring, Miss Doyle. <laughs> I have I have borne my, my good news and now I shall leave you to your devices. <laughs> um and she she turns around and leaves. <sighs> okay, now that she's gone, and I bend down and I pick up the clipboard. So this is our first gig. I think the first thing we need to do is know the size of the stage, right? Yeah, sounds then, yeah, that makes uh, sense. And then set up yeah, and then we set up, um, maybe we can book time in the auditorium. Because um, I don't know, Valerie, have you performed in front of people before? Um, like an audience? No, but, you know, I've practiced my own routine plenty of times. I'm sure it's not that different. Yeah, of course. I've done dance recitals in front of people, but it's very different, I'm sure, from a concert situation. But I think if we see if we can book the auditorium for at least half of our practices. Then we have an idea of what the lights will feel like and all of that stuff to get us prepared. I agree. You all sound like you know what you're talking about. So um, I agree. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I make noise. Where is um Stormlight, by the way? I'm not, I'm kind of new in town, so I have no idea where everything is. Uh, I guess this is oh. for the people a or asking. This is uh, this is a pretty downtown club. It's in one of the high traffic areas of the city. Yeah, um. there. <laughs> <laughs> if you want, you can name like the neighborhood too. <laughs> What's a trendy name for like a club area of town? <laughs> hmm. Like yeah. the Neon District or something, or <laughs> 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 maybe too cyberpunk. I don't know. I mean, 
I don't see why not. Sounds good. I wouldn't be surprised if I just brought the city map up here. I wouldn't be surprised if it's somewhere near Starforge and Starview in that whole sort of musicy area. Yeah, especially if a lot of uh, a lot of groups are performing there already. Sorry, you say it's too too cyberpunk, and I just think, oh, it's on it's on uh, Deckard Street. Yes, <laughs> it's absolutely on Deckard Street. <laughs> we should just roll with it. Yes, yeah, let's roll with it. <laughs> That's good. Oh my goodness, I will definitely add that to the map later for sure. <laughs> it is yeah. on Deckard Street in the Neon District. <laughs> yeah. I like this. Uh, I was already imagining you know, it's this. That's where all the holographs of all the. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's where all the giant holographs are. Yeah. <laughs> this is already a slightly more futuristic world than the one we live in. And also to clarify, um, since we started recording this whole podcast before the whole pandemic hit, this is obviously an alternate universe where there was no pandemic in the year 2020. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Please, yes. <laughs> yeah. We're living out our, our fantasies of going outside. Yeah. Meeting up in groups. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. What's Just that being like? able to go to school every day. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it got sad. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Sorry. Got um, a little too real. Yeah, so, yeah, it's in the Neon District. Um, so, I don't know how other people are picturing it, but since it's near Starforge Records and stuff, maybe there's some other smaller ones. And, like, as you're walking down this one street, it's just, like, video holograms of, like, some of the idols they have just performing and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, cool. That's awesome. They would absolutely be that extra. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a few, like, late-night noodle places. Yes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Has to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, my aunt told me about those noodle places. Oh, yeah, we'll have to go there after the show, because it's so good. It's kind of weird how the noodles themselves are kind of neon, but I'm sure it's safe. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's totally <laughs> fine. <laughs> Like anybody who's grown up in Cadence, yeah, (laughs) everyone who's grown up in Cadence absolutely knows that the noodles just look weird, but are amazing. And perfectly safe. (laughs) Karen gives a thumbs up. I eat there all the time. (laughs) Winning commercial smile. Karen's fine. Oh no, it just kind of worries me. Okay. um, (laughs) Are we going to be able to just go there and book a, uh, go there and check it out? Or do you have to get tickets? How does, how does entry work? Oh, yeah. Um, how does entry work? <laughs> uh, like I said, um, <laughs> the, there is uh, there are under 18 hours. Um, people can go in without ID, like, during daytime hours and maybe before, like, 7 p.m. But it is fairly crowded a lot of the time. Uh, so, okay. And there is a high cover charge. But if you are talent, uh, you probably could get in on the... Oh, you need to see the venue and prepare for your show, that kind of thing. And is there, like, measurements online Uh that we can look up? Like, you know, students who probably have access to the internet. (laughs) Oh, I keep forgetting that. I play too much (laughs) D&D. You you probably could. They're they're fairly, like, since they're such a big venue and probably a lot of performers want to know this sort of information, yeah, it probably would be online. Yeah. So at least we'd know, and then we could probably see if Mrs. Doyle could call ahead and just, like, schedule, you know, maybe a quick half an hour moment before it opens in the day where we can just mm-hmm. go and check it out before school starts. Uh, or I could try to uh, get that set up through Rain Shadow Records, because I have a move for... When you call upon the resources of your sanctuary, which is the Rain Shadow office, to solve a problem. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, that's way easier than trying to get Mrs. Doyle to do it, I think. (laughs) Easier for people that aren't me. Yeah, I guess. All right. So it says, when you call upon the resources of your sanctuary to solve a problem, say what you want to do. The GM will give you one to four conditions you must fulfill to complete your solution. And there's a list of conditions for the sanctuary move on the doomed playbook however i also have the one of my doom signs the only one that i've unlocked is burning bright mark your doom track to ignore one of the gm's stated requirements when calling upon the sanctuary well this probably wouldn't take much because like the the venue already knows you're 
going to be performing there at some point. Uh, so it probably wouldn't be a lot. I'm going to say one of the requirements is first you must you must talk to Mary Rain herself because <laughs> she has a, a big say in like where the talent makes appearances and whatnot. Uh, and is probably very interested in what your first performance will be and wants to control that. So you'll probably want to actually have to speak to Mary. Uh, and I'll just say you also, you'll need help from Grace to work out like the nitty gritty scheduling and equipment details and whatnot. All right. I'm 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 okay with both of those requirements. All right. So <laughs> when when would you like to contact Mary? I don't know, did, did we have any other... Anything else we wanted to talk about as a group uh, before trying to set up this this venue? Well, I think our first step is to see how we can book the auditorium, I think, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, maybe in the second week, though, because maybe the first week is us um, figuring out what song we're going to do and then figuring out everybody's parts and then getting the rehearsal part of it down. Sure. If that makes sense to everyone. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to my contacts and see if I can get us access to the to the stage. That's great. Yeah, so um, we're all very talented individuals here um, that do have some opportunity to show off our skills, even if it's just highlighting Vivi in this particular um, in this particular performance, but. We all have a we all have a part in that, and it'll be our first experience on the stage. And I think we got this. I know I can I can help with some choreography. Well, that would be wonderful. I think we'd need at least maybe two people to support Valerie when she's on the stage. And I don't know if we're gonna have the disco bees ready in time, so we'll have maybe we I don't know we get them little hats or. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> little hats, little bumblebee hats. Yeah, we'll have to think of some ways to incorporate them into. Maybe we can incorporate them into the choreography. I've seen you do that before, so and that went pretty well. So I don't see what else could go wrong. The bee ended up on my face, and I've never been more scared in my life. <laughs> right, you're allergic. <laughs> yeah, um, I should be fine as long as they don't sting me. They are almost certainly not going to sting you, but there might be other allergic people who may not appreciate, so... That's true. I... I mean, I am willing to be graceful and take a step back and keep my bees for uh, for an open-air concert. Jaden's just, like, nodding, like, yes, please. Please. Karen's shoulders slump. Aw, no disco bees. <laughs> yeah, maybe in an enclosed space, it's not such a good idea. Yeah, probably have more oomph in, a, in an outdoor concert because they'd be able to spread out more and we could do visual sky effects, like maybe we could get them to like spell words mm -hmm. and stuff. Like, the possibilities are endless. I am inspired, everyone, <laughs> I have to say. Keep them far away from the audience. Exactly. Um, and I'm pretty good at music, so if we need someone to play something to back us up i'm pretty good at it um yeah i just have the you know existing music that i've practiced with or licensed from brain shadow records but if we have original music to play and sing to i'm, I'm sure that would be much better just something uh some, something to play off of you heard what i usually practice with and uh, I think it would set us apart, maybe from the other from the other schools, if we were playing an original work and we nailed it. Well, I'm definitely on it. Does anyone else want to help? Anyone else have decent musical talent and taste? I can make a particular noise, generally just the one, but I'm pretty good at it. We can work on it together then. Uh, and just nods, uh, just smiles slowly and nods. And Jaden is like very excited. His smile hasn't disappeared the whole time he's been here. <laughs> <laughs> Karen crosses her arms and looks like uh, weirdly determined for Karen. And she takes one arm out and points a light stick at each person in turn. So, Valerie, vocals. Angie, Queen Bee, dance. Anne, Jaden, music. 
makes sense. It's gonna, wait, Karen, what? So, what are you going to do? She just raises up the light sticks. Someone's got to make up for the disco bees. Good point. She's right. Good point. Yeah, she's, she's our, our number one fan. That's fair. And I give her a slightly awkward thumbs up. She she flashes like all the like six light sticks she has between her fingers still all at once. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have a plan. Who do you talk to you about the auditorium? Probably you would have to talk to the, the main office about that for booking rooms. How early would we have to book it? I would say we should probably go there tomorrow because I'm going to assume like this is after school and like us and like the other clubs are here and maybe a few faculty but like the people that would be in charge of booking probably wouldn't be right and there are probably still other clubs you might have to compete for the room with like well the drama club Mm -hmm. and the dance club oh yeah um the slots we get might not be the greatest i'll go down there tomorrow if anyone wants to come with me um maybe yeah maybe we all go and then we can emphasize the importance of this. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. I'm sure that we're that serious w- about this. Sounds like a plan. Hope we don't have to deal with the drama club. They're always so <sighs> dramatic. <laughs> Karen narrows her eyes. Drama club. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, so we have a plan on that. Uh, Aaron, how much time do we have left to in our club time? Like, would you say that that probably took up all our time for the day? I, like- I think so, because you spent like a lot of it beforehand, like going through everybody's like abilities and, and musical talents and whatnot. So I think that probably brings us to the end of the club meeting. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, how about we meet in the office at 7.30 a.m. before school starts, so that- Oh, um, I should remind everybody, by the way, it is Friday right now. Monday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but maybe we can get started on some dance practices sometime this weekend, even if it's just in the gym or something. I'm free. I have no plans, mm-hmm. so yes, yeah. Okay, so we'll- I'll just say I go through the motions on my clipboard, because it also has a calendar, because of course- Oh, I'm yes. Prepared. I, I, I would be surprised if you didn't. stationary for this, so we'll just maybe schedule some time on Saturday. Is that okay with everyone? Of course. On this uh, specific time we totally agreed on. <laughs> 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 All right. Oh, and I, I should say we, we're we not going to do this right now because there's something else we want to do um, after the club meeting first, but for future like practices and whatnot, if it's not like a specific practice session that you want to play out like as a scene... Uh, we do have the idle activities move, which can abstract out like multiple practice sessions or like other uh, group activities that you want to carry out. Like, I don't know, like advertising for the show or like trying to book things or doing all the busy work, that kind of thing. Okay, awesome. that's that's awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we won't have to play out every single practice session, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we can we can move forward to the good stuff when we want to. Yeah. Maybe the first one would be kind of yeah. fun. Just I figure to... like we could probably do the Saturday one because that'll be like your first real practice session. I'd like to see that played out. Uh, but yeah. for like the two weeks intervening, that you, whatever scenes that you don't want to play out during that time, we can abstract. Yeah. yeah sounds awesome. Do it in a montage, if you will. Exactly. Alrighty, so you're you're all wrapping up for now then, gathering your things and whatnot? That's right, yeah. We're yes. done for yeah. today, and we've agreed to meet um, Saturday. Okay. And I remember I and, you know, a few of us did use the transform move in the last session. I don't think that we resolved that. Oh yeah, you're, you were I, still transformed when you were talking to Ms. Doyle. Yeah, we're yeah. all transformed. Which, <laughs> which I guess explains how she knows that um, that Valerie is Violence Violet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although you probably would have like given her some of that information when the club was formed too, just because a responsible adult does have to know the details of what's going on in the club and who's in it and whatnot. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she would help. <laughs> we'll say she's totally in the know because you know teenagers just love telling adult stuff <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah i guess i should clarify for like i know that like uh for luca do you think queen bee would have just signed up as queen bee or absolutely would... yeah i guess miss doyle would not know 
who Queen Bee, quote unquote, is, but knows that there's probably a privacy reason for it. Alrighty, so you, so you all are packing everything up and getting ready to go and uh, heading out, uh, but not all of you are heading home. Uh, I'm actually gonna do sort of what we did for for Valerie, Angie, and Cynthia a couple episodes back, and we're gonna have some one-on-one -on -one sessions with our new characters so we can get to know kind of who they are outside of the Idol Club. Um, oh, and uh Hold on. Before we do that, the the reason I mentioned that we were still transformed was if we should do the the detransform. Oh move. yes, true. <laughs> now that the club meeting is ending. Yes. Thank you for keeping me on top of that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyone who transformed during the last session and who is um, not or er, and who is detransforming right now, I know Queen Bee probably wouldn't do it until after she's gone. Um, and I physically can't. Yeah, mm. <laughs> and can't. So I have, I'm, I'll start with Angie. I'm going to say, since you were you were in sort of like organizing <laughs> mode, um, I'm going to say that's that's a pretty sort of like mundane aligned thing. So I'm going to put your mundane up one and your danger down one. Okay. And Valerie, let's uh, see. I actually wrote down that I had my, I put my superior up and my savior down when I transformed. Okay. I think, yeah, let's just reverse that. So I'll put your your savior back up and your superior down. Is All right. Okay. Uh, and then Jaden. So I'm going to lower your freak by one, and I'm going to raise your mundane by one. Because Jaden is sense. such a nice and affable guy. <laughs> that he is. I really like this system, too, because um, if your character's changing over time, like, the labels can change, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I didn't expect Angie to be so good at organizing the rest of the team and stuff like that, so I'm kind of glad <laughs> there's already mechanics in there that uh, fit that nice. new change in her, I guess, where she's like, actually, I love stationery and planning stuff. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> like, she she puts herself out there as, like, a like a, a snobby fashionista whatever, but she's really into into dance and also into planners and spreadsheets. Yeah, yeah, pretty Maybe much. she's surprising herself right now. <laughs> okay, and I think... Um, oh yeah, everybody transforming, I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then Anne just gets to be Anne. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Steady as a rock. So... Uh, I think we're all good with detransforming now. Uh, anybody else have anything last minute before they want before the group breaks up? Um, I get everybody's email addresses so I can email them the spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to simply say that Anne does not have a Gmail. She has like some like really outdated email and refuses to explain why she hasn't upgraded. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we set up like a Discord server. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm absolutely for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so all that stuff, she would just take all that information down so she could just like and she's like vibrating with excitement about putting together all these spreadsheets. <laughs> like she's also got a spreadsheet plan for everybody's like strengths and weaknesses and stuff we can do to improve. <laughs> awesome. That's gonna be her Friday night. <laughs> All right, so everybody wish wishes each other a goodbye and a good weekend, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, most of you head home, I imagine, or out mm -hmm. of the school uh, grounds at least, um, but uh, one of you does not. One of you is going to stay on the school grounds, and that person is Queen Bee, who, as we said, once everybody is gone, is going to detransform into... Into Alan Mikuchi. So it turns out that maybe there is a little more to Queen Bee that meets the eye. Alan Mikuchi is a skinny teen with pale skin, grey eyes, a mole under the right eye, and short light brown hair. They've always been an unassuming kid, uncomfortable in the spotlight. It's not that they don't love performing, dancing most of all, but criticism has always hit them harder than it does for most. Never mind that Alan has been struggling a bit with the whole gender thing as well, which makes people's criticism of their image hurt that much more. How fortunate then that Alan's powers just recently manifested. The ability to transform into someone else has been like a wish come true. 
Allen can now create an alternate persona for themselves, a way they can perform and hone their craft without feeling ridiculed. Maybe they can even build up the kind of superstar confidence that they could only dream about before. Still, being an idol isn't going to solve all of Allen's problems in an instant. They have a lot of commitment to keep up with outside the idol club. Schoolwork, chores, a part-time job, and most important of all, they are a long-time member of the Fort McNally Environmental Club. And so, we follow Allen on their way to the Environmental Club now. Like the ancient Janus of Meat, Allen passes through a door between lives, hoping anxiously that they can keep everything in balance. They, when they, they transform, they just give out a deep sigh and they're like, okay, that went well. Alrighty, and I, I assume I know where, where Alan is headed, right? Yes, I have to swing by the Eco Club. I was actually a little worried because the, the idle meeting was running a bit long. Yes, but thankfully the, the Eco Club has fairly long meetings because their activities are fairly labor-intensive a lot of the time, so you know they're probably still on campus, and probably in the, the same area they always are, which is kind of out back of the school, beyond where the, the track and field area is, kind of near the back fences of the of the grounds, where there is a compost area, where, which the club has set up, and also a uh, collection of bee colonies, like the little like box bee colonies that beekeepers have. And there you find uh, the members of the Eco Club, or the Environmental Club, or whatever we want to call it, uh, headed up by the illustrious Professor Phillips. Uh, not a real professor, he mainly calls himself that, just to make him seem <laughs> more important and erudite. Uh, he's the school science teacher, uh, he's the TA for the Environmental Club. He's a pretty well-meaning, kind of like boomer environmentalist type, like definitely has a long ponytail and goatee, that kind of person. Uh, but he has he has a good heart. He's very protective of his of his bees. He built all these uh, with Alan's help. Help be, build all these bee colonies himself. Uh, partly with uh, his own money uh, because the school didn't have enough money to set up all these colonies themselves. He's very protective of any like harm that might come to his his precious bees. <laughs> Uh, and that's where you find Professor Phillips there. You also find various other members of the club there, uh, including your childhood friend. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I hope you don't mind. I've come up with details for some of these NPCs that you described to me. Uh, you, you find your childhood friend. Her name is Mackenzie. She goes by Kenzie. Uh, she's like a girl with straight, kind of dark brown hair with a reddish tint. Uh, and she waves you over. She's doing some work, kind of in the compost area with some gloves on. Nearby is her boyfriend, uh, his name is Laramie, but he goes by Raimi, uh, and he's very adamant that no one should call him Larry. Uh, he's kind of like a, like a shaggy skater boy, and they're both kind of just doing their work in the compost right now, so that's where, that's who you find, along with a bunch of other randos. Uh, walk pretty quickly up to them. Oh, hey guys, hi. Hi, Kenzie, how are you doing? Sorry I'm late. Hey, Alan, no, no worries. I know that uh, you you said you were going to, what what is it, the... Yeah, it was just, uh, you know, catching up at some homework because, uh, like, uh, my mom's going to be away and I have to take care of a bunch of chores in the weekend, so... Oh, right, right, right. You always have, like, a million and one things to do. I know, that's... <laughs> you've always been <laughs> such an overachiever and she, like, kind of elbows you a bit. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, how's the compost going? Oh, good, good. Uh, we're just putting like so, a bunch of like uh, new worms in right now. I don't know. I th <laughs> it's hard to keep them from fighting, you know. That all those like interworm colony wars they like to have. It's it's a warm it warm worm. <laughs> but yeah, man. Like how nobody has any like homework of any like big importance right now. But it doesn't su surprise me at all that you do, Alan. You've always been such a big overachiever. <laughs> You big nerd. Uh, I just, I'm, I'm trying, you know, I just, I wasn't doing so well last year, I need to pick up the pace. I don't know why you're so hard on yourself, you're, you're already like a million years better than, I don't know, fucking me. Oh, come on, you got, you got all the extracurriculars, I, I'm probably, actually, I'm probably really gonna be really busy in the next few weeks, cause I just, I'm doing this, uh, trying to get some extra credit, no. 
Yeah, fair. I know the professor is going to be real sad that you're not around more often, but I'm, sh- I'm sure he understands, yeah? And Professor Phillips kind of waves from uh, over near the bee co- colonies. He's in his, his beekeeper's gear. So are the bees all right? Uh, they did kind of like all like swarm off at one point earlier. That's always been a little bit weird. Um, and Professor Phillips overhears this and actually like comes over uh, and says, "Yeah, I don't. I it's really odd behavior. I have not seen this in these colonies at any point before now. But lately, they've all been leaving in giant groups lately, and I I don't know what's causing it. It's most perplexing." Uh. Like, I mean, could, could there be, like, some new flowers around, or maybe cell phone towers? Your guess is as good as mine. It could be the chemtrails, for all we know. <laughs> yeah, chem- chemtrails are fine. Yeah, that's a good hypothesis. I, it's, as good as I've, it's as good as any that I've got right now. I, again, I don't know what would cause every bee in a hive to leave all of a sudden at once. It's it's as if they were summoned. I I suppose that's not out of the realm, given the, the world we find ourselves in these days. And you know that Professor Phillips is not necessarily a big fan of the whole super idol phenomena. Yeah, I, he, he liked this uh, his laws of physics to work the normal way, but I mean, he, they came back, right? They did come back. That is a good thing, at least. They were looking good. There were no problem. They're they're healthy. They seemed a little energized, even. Like they just, like they just, it's weird. It seemed like they just gone out to the club. They were all energized and kind of almost happy looking. Well, I mean, unless the colony is suffering, I don't think we should worry too much. I mean, the bees know, know what they're doing better than we do. That is true. We don't mess with nature, but nature seems to know what it's doing. Yeah, you, you, you don't mess with nature. <laughs> and and Kenzie kind of pokes you again. Yeah, or else nature pokes you back, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, can, can, can you want to hand me the shovel? Can I help you? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, hey, uh, Raimi, give, give me the shovel, all right? And, and Raimi kind of gives her, like, a glowering look, like, Can you not get it yourself? I'm not your manservant. Uh, and Kenzie rolls her eyes. Oh, not this again. <laughs> How much do I actually ask of you? Like, seriously. And they're, they're having, like, an argument at this point. This is fairly common for them. They're one of those, oh, like, on-again, off-again couples who are... <laughs> you, you're very used to their cycle at this point. Yeah, we're, we're on the low tide. <laughs> yeah, this is low uh, tide for them. I mean, at least it's not one of the make-out days. Yeah. <laughs> One of the nearby, like, random students kind of shudders nearby. They know. They know what you're talking about. Uh, so they're they're kind of arguing nearby, and, and Professor Phillips knows better than to sort of, like, get between them at this point. So he's going to, like, kind of pull you away for, from the compost for a bit and take you, like, more, like, towards where the bees are. Like, uh, but but anyway, how, how has your, your first week of the new year been, Alan? I know things have always been quite busy for you and i I know they're going to be even more so this year from what you've told me um but i i understand you you have a lot of commitments that need to be met Uh, yes professor but it's it's i mean i I feel a bit pressured but uh, so far i'm I'm handling the workload pretty well i think i i feel like it's gonna work out i mean i even found a couple people to study with and Oh, wonderful. That's so good to hear. Uh, I know that making friends has, has always been, like, a little bit difficult, but I, I have confidence that once people get to know you, they w- they will see the same strengths that I and your other club members see in you. You're, you're a kind person with a good heart and a strong work ethic. I, I don't see why anyone wouldn't, be, wouldn't want to be friends with you. Yes, Professor. I... Uh... That that is very nice of you to say. Thank you. I don't say it. Uh, I don't say it randomly. I I say it because over the last year you've been such a great help for me and the bees. Like, I just like them. You know, they. I don't know. They just a calming presence. Well, they certainly seem to like you, and they 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 do. The bees do seem to like. They know that Professor Phillips and you are friendly presences. They know that as long as there's no sudden movements. <laughs> 
that no harm is going to come to them. So they kind of fly kind of lazily around the both of you. Just, uh, do, you, do you mind if I just check on the queen really quick? Oh, yes, absolutely. I'm sure she, I'm sure she's dying to see you. I put on the, the gloves and the, and the headgear and I just uh, slowly lift the top of the colony and I just, just say hi. And yeah, even though you aren't able to like physically like hear anything from the bees right now other than the buzzing, uh, I think you have a look at her and you, you get the feeling like she like looks up at you and like kind of there's a like there's a, you could almost imagine there's like a glimmer of recognition there of like both you as you are now and also the other queen bee who is not physically present but still present right now. That's uh probably the best relationship two queen bees have. <laughs> Look at and these she, queens. She hasn't tried to kill me yet. That's good. <laughs> so just say hi, whisper thank you for earlier, I'll keep an eye on them, I won't put them at risk, and then I, I just close the, the colony up. Professor Phillips nods at you and, and commends you on your technique at putting the, <laughs> the panels back, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know how beekeeping yeah. works. <laughs> no, it's just it's not that hard, you just have to be careful not to get anyone caught in the middle, you know. Just That's, that is true. Thank you, thank you, Professor. No trouble so, at all. Oh, and uh, I, I wanted to know if uh, the club was planning anything for uh, two Saturdays from now? Oh, um, let me think. I, I don't think we've nailed down all of the details yet, but I know that there is going to be... Uh, sort of a neighborhood cleanup initiative coming soon. Uh, we don't know exactly what the dates and times are going to be yet, but I I would assume it is probably going to be on a weekend coming up. Um, if there's something specific you need to attend to on two Saturdays uh, just, from now, uh, I can you know, probably take that yeah, into account. Yeah, uh, there's like, uh, my cousin's gonna be in town, and we're, we're kind of hoping to spend the evening with, uh, with him, so... But if it's a morning thing, I I'm there. Oh, absolutely. All right. Uh, yeah, no, that should be fine. It definitely would be the sort of thing that would happen during the day. I don't think anybody wants to <laughs> pick up trash in the, the dregs of evening on a, oh, yeah. have a nice crisp autumn afternoon picking up litter. Okay, that, that's wonderful, Professor. I just wanted to, to make sure, because, you know, I, I want you to know that you can count on me. Well, I know, I absolutely know that I can. You... <laughs> You've certainly saved my bacon and the bee's bacon more than once. Uh, and I think uh, this is going to be a, a potential influence shift here. Professor Phillips is trying to tell you who you are and how the world works, because he's, he's saying that you're you're a help to him and a help er, to the bees, and uh, you sort of protect them in a way. I'm going to say he's going to try and raise your savior and lower your danger. Or actually, actually that. lower your freak, because I think we talked about him not being a fan of super idols in this conversation as well, so he probably doesn't <laughs> want that aspect in you either. So, do you think you would accept Savior up and freak down, or do you want to try and reject that? Hmm. Hmm. I think I'm gonna timidly try to reject that. I mean, Professor, I like, I like to do what I can when I can, and I mean, this, this is important, and just, uh, you know, I just I, I want you to know that even if sometimes I'm I can't be there, it's because I can't. It's not that I don't want to. Oh uh, no, that's that's absolutely fair. And uh, sorry, did you say you're actually like actively rejecting it, or are you? I, I'm trying. Yeah, I, I'm attempting to reject it. Okay, so that does require a roll in that case. Oh, I think yes. it would just. It, I think it's just a flat two d six roll, which there is a button for that okay. on your sheet. Okay. Ooh, nice! You got a full hit. So on a 10 plus, uh, you tune them out and hold to yourself and you get to choose two from the following list. You can either clear a condition or mark potential by immediately acting to prove them wrong, which I think you're starting to do. Uh, you can shift one label up and one label down, your choice, or you can cancel their influence and take plus one forward against them. Hmm. I, no, I'm not going to cancel their influence. I think I might have to immediately prove them wrong. Alrighty, so you've already started that by, by sort of explaining to yeah. Professor Phillips, like, it's not because I don't want to, it's because I have to, that sort of thing. So that's, you're you're definitely already starting to prove them wrong. Uh, would you like to, I guess you don't have any conditions marked, so you can mark a potential yes. there. Perfect. Uh, and then you also get to shift one label up and one label down of your choice. I am shifting my freak up. Alrighty. Uh, 
Then I'm shifting my severe down. Okay, so no, the exact... my mundane down, sorry. <laughs> oh, sure, my sure. My mundane down. Okay, so that will put your freak at a one and your mundane at a two. Perfect. All right, in, th in that case, I think Professor Phillips accepts that from you and is like, ah, yeah, no, that's understandable as well. I don't think it makes you any less of a helpful person, but I, I understand that obligations can, uh, can force things as well, for sure. Thank you for being understanding. Oh, no problem at all. Uh, I think the... <laughs> I think the couple is is starting to wind down at this point. I see they're they're starting to move to opposite ends of the compost area. I think you might be safe to go back to your work if you want to. Thank you, Professor. You're Oof. welcome. Uh, and is there anything else you want to do before the the scene ends? I uh, just uh, while I'm going to to Kenzie, I just uh, I pat Larry on the shoulder and I go like, I get it. <laughs> uh, it and Remy sort of like kind of flinches away because he's a little less familiar with you than Kenzie is, but he, after flinching initially, sort of like calms down a bit and just kind of sighs and doesn't really say anything. He just kind of gets back to digging in the dirt and putting worms in. And when he flinches, I kind of flinch back and I'm like, oh, just okay, maybe that was too much. Uh, just, uh, I just, it, it's an awkward moment. And, and Kenzie just shoots him a, a glare from across the, the other side of the, the area as well. I will go back to composting. Alrighty, in that case, we leave Alan. They're going to continue their work in the compost area with the rest of the club. Probably going to be there for a little while longer. We'll leave them there, and as, as we sort of leave the, the Fort McNally campus and catch up with Anne, who I believe is, is heading somewhere to meet someone right now. Anne is heading to her usual meeting spot with her best slash only friend uh, Drew at the uh, at the uh, alley store, which is it's called that because it's actually uh, right next to an alley uh, in her neighborhood. Oh yeah, no, oh, that's good. I I like it. I like it. So you're just gonna like kind of hang or meet up with Drew sort of out front of the store. Uh, yeah, she's uh, they always kind of meet up there after school and uh, just pick up a drink like fizzy drinks in the store. Like, it's like. Uh, I like to think that um, Anne doesn't have to drink or eat anymore in a transformed form, and only really does it with people she's comfortable with. Oh, God. I'm making this angsty as hell. Oh, now, I, now I'm trying to... F this, this is probably too much information, but now I'm wondering what happens when she does eat or drink. Oh, she can. It's just she doesn't need to. Like, it's like... It, I don't know how to describe it. Oh, fair, fair. All right, so so you, you sort of head up to the store. Uh, you're making your way, and you see a familiar face. You see Drew... What does Drew look like? I, I think I didn't get a chance to come up with a, an appearance for him. Uh, Drew is the teenix and has like kind of short mid-range uh, brown hair. He's often like uh, kind of dresses in a, a usually an orange t-shirt and a pair of jeans. Alrighty, so so you see, <laughs> well, you see that. <laughs> you see Drew uh, kind of <laughs> leaned up against the, the side of the of the shop front, kind of arms crossed, start headphones in, listening to some music, and, it, uh, and he sees you coming around the corner. Uh, and gives you like a, a big wave. He's very energetic, <laughs> uh, and he's he's gonna sort of jog up towards you and say, "Anne, how's it going?" Usual. Well, not usual. Actually, very different today. But it's uh, it's been a day, so doing some normalcy. Ooh, different. Do tell. Yeah, and begins kind of like explaining the day going on. Like went to a club, club for girls, like, people like me ones who didn't make the dumb decision I did, but yeah, went there, they transformed, some of them transformed back, I didn't, maybe I remember the fact that I could, and now I just want to drink something that doesn't, I don't even need to anymore to try and forget why, I, to forget the fact that I can't transform back. Say no more, we absolutely need piles of sugar right now, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he ushers you into the building. Uh, you definitely know the shopkeep very well, both of you. I think even before you transformed, the, the shopkeep was very, uh, very grateful for the both of you, kind of like keeping trouble out of his shop. And he, gi he gives you the, the friends and family discount at this point. I want to establish that even before she transformed, like Anne was like a six foot three brick shit house. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I think people don't want to miss with like two like... Uh, scary looking punk rockers hanging around in front of the store. One of whom is now a foot and made of stone. Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, so you, so you head in, you head to the, to sort of like the area where the, the drinks and slushies and stuff are. Uh, the shopkeep gives you a wave, I will say his name is, uh, I don't know, um, Mr. Taylor. <laughs> awesome. Alright. He says, hey, hey, you two, how's it going today? Well, how are my best customers? Same as usual, Taylor, same as usual. That's good, that's good. You have a good day at school, I, you both of you. Of course we did. I mean, Drew always has good days, and if he does it, I make sure that his day goes good. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> mm, uh, yeah, and kind of like scruffles, like kind of like rubs like a hand, through, like, kind of like you know, not no gee, but kind of just scruffles like Joe's hair, since again she's a lot taller than him. <laughs> and he he gives a, a nice laugh there as he like loads up a giant Slurpee cup uh, with like every single color available. <laughs> so tell me absolutely everything. What was different about today? Well, like I said went to went to the idol club. You know, the one we have in our school. And, uh, yeah. Oh, you was... mean with all, like, the sparkles and ruffles and stuff? Or, like, are they actually, like, cool? Column A, column B. Right on, right on. Yeah, it was nice, I guess. I not used to people who were like me, you know, like, the way I used to be. And, yeah, it's, it was nice. Like, you're great, like, don't get it wrong. It, Literally, I kill everyone at school if, like, it, like it meant you had a good day, Drew. But um, <laughs> I am always appreciative of, of your offers to murder people in my name. <laughs> and just like kind of chuckles a bit, and uh, yeah, but it's just weird, you know. Like they, I fucked up. I know I fucked up, and now I'm just like this till, well, forever. But they're smart. I feel like they won't do what I did. They won't just throw themselves into that to, into. Yeah, since kind of shows just don't hand a bit. Just to get away from life and pain and shit like that. Oh man, uh, yeah, I know, it's... Uh, it's... still stinks the big one. I wish I could tell you otherwise, but I... I do think, regardless, you're still, like, the fucking awesomest person that I know. Like, so, I think you're gonna bring, like, some great level of hardcore to whatever this club is gonna be doing for the next however long. And he's just like pulling out, like she's just like, she kind of like grabbed the basket and he's just like dumping random balls like coke, seven up, pretty much everything into the bag and into the basket and it's just like, eh, it's not just gonna be me. Wherever you go, wherever I go, you go. Wherever I rise, you rise. Hell yeah. And he sort of like gives you the sort of like, the like Arnold Schwarzenegger predator handshake kind of thing. <laughs> You know the, yeah, the big the, muscle guy handshake. Duke, you meme? son of a bitch. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the, you so, yeah, exactly. The you son of a bitch handshake. Mm. Yeah, Anne returns it, but like he's definitely not using full force in it because like again, she could probably crush his arm if she did in full force. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think he he feigns a little bit like ah, but no, he uh, he he laughs to pretty quickly enough to show that you're not actually hurting him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so you uh you both pay for your for your drinks and, and slushies and whatnot, uh, and you sort of head out to the the alley of the alley store and hang out where you usually hang out. And just kind of like, he's like, as they're sitting down, just drinking their whatever craft they got from the store, um, and just goes, yeah. look, I know I'm kind of like, well, not, I'm kind of a rocky person, don't laugh, to hang out with, but... <laughs> he absolutely know, I, will not not laugh. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know, I think I, maybe I should loosen up with the people back in the place, like, maybe, I don't know, maybe could help. What do you think, Drew? It depends on kind of what kind of people they are. Like, if you think they're cool, yeah, for sure, open up to them. Like, you're, like, I know a lot of people from the the band kind of turned out to be shitheads when at, you transformed and kind of uh, left you in the lurch. S- still, ugh. He, he shakes his head and, and sighs like he still hasn't forgiven those guys for leaving you behind like that. Um, I don't know, do you think they're the sorts of... If, they, if they've already kind of accepted you, they're already doing like a hell of a lot better than what came before, right? You're good with words, Drew. And, uh, and just kind of wraps an arm around him like, kind of like in a friendly way, you just kind of bring him into like a half hug. Aw, oh, come here, big girl, and he gives you a, like a hug as well. I think um, I think that's good for me for the scene. Alrighty, and then uh, moving on from from here, we sort of travel down the the rest of the streets away from the alley store, uh, and we end up at Jaden's current abode. I I wouldn't call it the 
the Lot family home because, uh, as it turns out, Jaden is the only Lot living here, isn't he? Yeah, he is living with his aunt, who's a Corsair. <laughs> so I yeah. think, um, since he's still not used to the city, he's probably looking at the equivalent of the Google Maps, <laughs> trying to figure <laughs> out how to get back, <laughs> get back. Yeah, so like how, he might... how recently did Jaden move here? I think probably like a couple of days ago. Oh, that recent? Yeah. So he's still getting used to like the layout of the town. Um, so he probably gets back a little later than he probably should have. Yeah, that's fair. And I think uh, I think your aunt is understanding of that, like knowing that you don't quite know your way around yet. Although she has offered to like pick you up and give you a ride if you get lost at all. Like you have her number for sure. Yeah. I think he, even when he does get lost, he refuses to ask for help. He's <laughs> he like it's fine, it's fine, Jen. I can do it myself. I can find, I can figure it out. <laughs> uh, but this time so, yeah, you uh, do definitely have managed to find your way home eventually. Yeah. Awesome. Is there any way? Is there anywhere you you would have stopped on the way back, or are you just did you head straight home? Do you think? Oh, I headed straight home because I was excited. I wanted to tell her everything that happened today. Uh, so you head up to your your front walk. You you finally get there. It's starting to get a, a little bit dark, but not too bad yet. Uh, and you head in the front door. Jen, I'm home. As I close the door behind me. Oh, welcome back. How was your day? And she sort of p- pokes her head out of the out of the kitchen. She's kind of like, she's clearly making like something intensive in the kitchen right now. <laughs> it it was great. It was okay. I need to tell you everything that happened. And then I, I drop my school bag on the ground, take my shoes off and just rush into the kitchen and just sit on the counter and watch her. She's cooking. Oh, yes. she's And she's just about done, too, because it took a little bit longer for you to get back. She's working on a great sort of like big chicken and veggies, kind of like very saucy kind of dish right now. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not very creative with food. Uh, well, that uh, pretend it looks amazing. It looks amazing. <laughs> well, uh, that looks good. Yeah, no, it's just about ready. Like, def- absolutely. Let's sit down and talk about it. I know you've been very excited. Uh, tell me all about it. Okay. Okay. So, so classes were kind of okay. I, I'll be honest, I wasn't listening much. I was too busy thinking about. And you know, Jen does give like a little bit of a frown at that because she knows that like she promised your mom and dad that she would make sure that your grades were, <laughs> were up to snuff. Yeah, I think he picks up on that and he's like, I, I promise I'll listen next time. I'll just. I'm really excited, you know? It's kind of hard to concentrate. No, that's that's understandable. School can be, like, not the most exciting thing, that's for sure. Um, but definitely make sure that you, you keep on top of it for the year going forward. That's... I want to make sure I'm doing right by, by your mum and dad. I will, I promise. So, um... Okay, we have to go on a scavenger hunt to find the idol, um, club... I Ooh, guess clubhouse. how fun! It... it... It was a lot. I was not prepared for it, I'll be honest. But we eventually found it, and all the members are amazing. There, there's Valerie, and they're, they're... Oh my god, they're so cool. They are so cool. I want to be as cool as them. And and then there's there's Warcry, and and Queen Bee, and Angie, who's um, Dean Raven, I believe. And they... Oh, we're going to be... I think we've actually got a chance to be famous, honestly. Oh, and it, you you heard some of their their talents then I assume. Yeah, well, yeah. Are they all like? Are they all like? Uh, actually, does Jen know? Well, uh, Jen knows that you have powers, I assume, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Like some people keep that secret, some people don't. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and Jaden is definitely not trying to hide it. Jaden wants to become famous and provide for his family, so he doesn't care that his name is attached to all of that. He kind of wants it to be attached to all of that. Right. Uh, so, so Jen asks, like, so are they all, are they all like you? Are they all super idols? Or are they all, or are they just like really enthusiastic, I guess? No, they're all super idols or, or want to be. And I think they all have like, they have the perfect skills and amazing abilities to be super idols. So I think we've actually got a chance. In fact, we've actually already got a gig. Really? And that then her her eyebrows shoot up like all oh, right that that is super quick. How did how did you all swing that? I I have no clue. I think it was um Miss Doyle, uh, she's in charge of the club. She somehow got that together. Oh wait, no. It was um Valerie. 
uh, she has a she's already connected with a record label, oh, and really? I think they got us. You like Starforge or someone else? No, um, Rain Shadow, I think. And at that, her her expression kind of like lowers a little bit again, and she she says, "Oh, um, well then, I I suppose it's good that she she has a starting point. That's for sure." And she's she's looking a little bit concerned and trying to to hide it as best she can. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Can I roll for it to see if I notice? Because yeah, <laughs> I'm really excited. So I don't yeah. know if I would. Do you want to roll to pierce the mask? Sure. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, boy. <laughs> that is a I don't six. Know, so. Oh. <laughs> uh, so on a uh, miss, I get to take a hard move against you, and you also don't get to <laughs> ask anything. I think I'm just going to inflict a condition on you. It's that's pro- that's fairly simple, but I think that's the best I uh, I have at the moment. So that you works. already have. It looks like you still have guilty marked. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say you're going to mark insecure because you're not sure why she's suddenly acting weird about this and you're not sure yeah. what to say in response. It's just fun. Yeah. Anyway, she tries to she tries to change the, the subject at this point. Well, I'm, I'm sure it sounds like everybody is very talented. I'm sure that ev- that everybody is going to be fantastic. When is this gig? Um, yeah, um, it's in a, about two weeks' time, se- September nineteenth. Where the stormlight, um, storm stormlight. Oh, at the st- I haven't- oh, that's amazing. I know you you haven't been here long, but I the stormlight is absolutely one of the premier venues in town. This is amazing. I I knew you were gonna be amazing. I I just didn't even know it was gonna be this fast. Oh, you're so- oh sweetie, and she like takes you sort of in her arms and gives you like a like a big smack on the forehead like that kind of like mom kiss kind of thing yeah and i'm just like giddy i'm like a little child giddy about it all <laughs> uh and she she's kind of shaken off the the rain shadow thing at this point um and she's uh she's gonna like kind of lay out plates on the table like well for your success i'm glad i made you this wonderful dinner you absolutely deserve it oh this is gonna be so exciting God, i i think you're gonna be even more impressed when you see everyone D- can you come are you going to be free then? I can you watch? I hope so. I think I think okay. it should be fine. It's at six p.m. You said I think that should be all right. Yes. Oh, I will absolutely be there then. Oh. Oh God, I need to tell mom and dad as well. Yes, absolutely. Call th- and call your sister as well. Your sister will be over the moon. Yeah, I definitely will. I really want to see what she thinks about this. <laughs> you have always been her idol, if no one else's, and you're. It's just going to be the world catching up from this point. Oh God, I can't wait. Oh, and you sort of both like sort of excitedly chatter over the rest of dinner. Uh, yeah. And obviously the the food is amazing. And is there there anything else you want to do before you head to bed for the evening? Are you going to call them tonight or or do you want to uh, save that I scene for another time? I think, yeah, I can save that scene for another time. Okay. Uh, and is there anything else you want to do before you head to bed? Um. Oh, yeah, actually, I'm going to. So I have like a little keyboard in my room. And, oh, sure. And I would just like. I guess trying to think up different tunes and melodies and stuff that we could I could present to the team. Oh, I like this. You're going to take on the role of the team's composer, it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. So uh, in that case, oh, I wonder if there's a move I can have you do for that. Probably, probably idle activities would be good for that, actually. I'm all for that. How we're going to do this is I have a custom move for this campaign called idle activities and the the usual description for the move is when time passes and the team works together on an idle related group activity such as practice planning or advertising everyone says what they're doing and a representative for the group makes a flat 2d6 roll and there's a few conditions by which we can add to the roll we can add one if the whole team is working towards the same goal add one if there's at least one participant with no conditions marked Subtract one from this roll if one or more team members has spoken out against the activity. Subtract one from this roll if all participants have at least two conditions marked. Um, oh, that could be interesting for this roll for sure. <laughs> and then we have some conditions for depending on what your roll is. Oh no, I just realized. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Considering you're doing this by yourself um, and you have two conditions marked, uh, you yeah. are going to take a minus one on this roll. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh. oh, and you still got an 11. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Goodness. So that would have been like a full wow. 12 without the minus one. 
You're just very inspired, which makes sense for this day that you've had. Yeah. All right, so on a 10 plus, your idle activities truly sparkle. The GM will detail an opportunity or benefit you, the group gains from your efforts. And, oh, it's not a 12 plus, uh, but if it was a, if it was a 12 plus, uh, you would also gain a potential. And I think the rest of the move doesn't really apply since it's you're doing this solo right now. So bottom yeah. line, you succeed with flying colors. Um, and I'm going to say you're so inspired that the benefit you gain is you write a really great first draft of this of this song that you're gonna have everybody practice to on saturday oh okay then uh, so what kind of song do you think it is I, as a player i'm not very musically inclined so <laughs> i don't know if this would work but i would try i would probably have it more rock but every so often shift slightly in genre to i guess i touch on everyone's genre at least a bit oh sure so that would be like I guess mostly mostly rock with like sort of a maybe like a gothic overtone since Valerie is the the star of this particular show, uh, yeah. but with occasional interludes into like more like a hard punk rock for Anne, and then like maybe more like a synth section for Queen Bee, uh, and like a, a hip hop inspired like break maybe between the the between the chorus and the. Like in the bridge, right? The bridge, that's the, yeah. the term I'm looking for. <laughs> Where uh, Angie can show off her, her hip-hop dance moves. Um, and uh, for for yourself, I guess, uh, what would you want to put in for yourself? Oh, for myself, I'd probably give myself a bit of time for maybe a drum solo if I can get to yeah. that. <laughs> so it sounds like it's going to be a fairly long song, but... <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, think, I think it can work. I think... The fact that it's like kind of patchwork is also like indicative that you're it's a it's still an early song you're still not like an expert at this but it's like surprisingly yeah. good considering it's one of your early efforts. Yeah. Alrighty. And with that, we're going to say that the evening ends with everybody feeling excited for the practice on Saturday. And is is there anything anybody else wants to do before like their characters like go to bed or like uh, do we want to touch base with anybody who didn't have a, a scene out uh, angie or valerie um i feel like angie would be um actually wouldn't excitedly tell her parents about the gig and she would just go upstairs into her room and uh, start working on the spreadsheets and stuff for <laughs> uh for everything but uh, she wouldn't tell her parents about it i don't think uh, and your little brother Freddy is absolutely bouncing a tennis ball on the the ru the wall of his room, which is right next to your room. Yeah, yeah. So while I'm trying to concentrate on the spreadsheet, I'll just be like, "Freddy, knock it off, mom," etc. <laughs> Very familiar <laughs> evening yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Freddy, cut that shit out right now! You hear from downstairs. Yeah, my Here. mom swears like a sailor. <laughs> Uh, and anything for for Valerie? Um, yeah, I think I I end up talking to my my sister Alice and just like you know we saw at the beginning of the day uh, or of the the previous day I was you know nervous and 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 she was kind of hyping me up to go back to school and at the end of the day I come home and like the mask comes off and I'm just like oh my god there was we got a bunch of new people to the club and we got a gig and I don't apparently I'm gonna be the headliner which is cool but scary and I don't I tried to act like you know I deserved it but I don't know they everyone else seemed a little weirded out because it was the you know the, the the studio set it up and like I wanted to be the, the the headliner but I I don't know if like having the studio like strong arm everyone into it is going to be the best way to do it but uh they're going to we, we're going to have have music and we're going to have uh coordination and one of them can control bees and i'm not sure how i feel about that <laughs> we're just, uh oh and, and <sighs> i think alice like just continues to like ex ex we won't do this in detail cuz i think we won't mm -hmm. <laughs> we wanna not drag the, the episode too long but <laughs> we're going to say Al alice sort of like excitedly talks with you about that and like tries to make sure that you're not like hyperventilating because this seems like a lot right now. 
Um, and she's very obviously supportive of you um, and is definitely going to, at the very least, ultimately say like, I think it's definitely going to work out. It sounds like you've got some really good teammates uh, and I think you're going to knock them dead. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, and everybody is is finishing up their nights and getting ready to go to bed for uh, for the next day. And elsewhere in the city, at Rain Shadow Record headquarters, we see sitting in a darkened dressing room, lounging on a sofa, we see a tall woman with long, wavy, blonde hair with green highlights, smoking a cigarette and smiling to herself. Thank you so much for listening to Super Idols RPG. Our cast for today was Dana Alexa as Valerie Pierce, Tia Wind as Evangeline Blake, Maria Fanning as Anne DeVille, Draconic as Jaden Lott, Luca as Queen Bee, and Aaron Cerise as the GM. Special thanks go to today's featured VIP patrons, Matthew F., Amaril, Kitty Lynn, and Lady Plague. This campaign is played using Masks, a new generation, written by Brendan Conway and published by Magpie Games, with custom moves by Aaron Cerise and Zach P. Our opening theme is Le Chevalier Noir Instrumental by Cyborg Jeff and is used under license from Shimendo Music. Our ending theme is Born to Drive Me Crazy Instrumental by Lance Conrad. This song and all other music for this episode are royalty-free tracks under license from Storyblocks.com. This episode also uses additional sound effects from freesound.org. If you liked this episode, please consider liking and commenting on the YouTube upload, or leaving us a review on your podcasting platform of choice. Stick around for a teaser from a new anthology RPG podcast, which plays short campaigns from various indie game systems, Fables Around the Table. Thank you again for listening, stay well, and goodbye until next time! It's 1997. There's been a turf war between the Visigoth of the 5th century and the Malgoths of today raging for a full year. Now, with the mysterious chain letter creating new conflict, the Goths will fight for dominance over the Hawthorne shops. But what happens when feelings get in the way? We're just gonna go mess with the Visigoths. Beric's just gonna make, like, kissy sounds. There's just, like, a coy little wink back. To woo a dark heart. Would this woo your dark heart? She's so pretty and she makes my heart beat so fast and I don't know why. Busy goss, mall goss. I guess the most important thing is that I'm free. Join Project Derailed if they play any nominated Busy Goss vs. Small Goths. Fables Around the Table, Season 2, Tainted Love. Sometimes, love bites. <laughs>